Today I want to tell you why I'm thankful for Angular and talk about some of the advantages that it offers over other front-end frameworks. If you follow Twitter, you may have seen the State of JS survey results were just published the other day. And what you will have learned from this survey is that everybody hates Angular and everybody loves Vue and React. But as you'll see over the next few minutes, that's not the actual reality that we live in. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and please let me know what you think in the comments because this is a very important topic. I'd like to start by saying that I'm a big fan of React, and especially Vue, and this video is nothing against those frameworks or the developers that use them. But it is a problem when flawed data is used to represent the entire JavaScript population. Because product managers and developers will use this data to justify their decisions. So I've done my fair share of data analysis, I'm a top-ranked Kaggle expert, and I can generally pick out when we're dealing with a bad data set. One of the most common ways to screw up a data set is with a sampling bias. Now, I'm not implying any malintent by the creators of this survey, they actually did an awesome job with the user interface, but they're all involved in the React community, which just makes it more likely for this survey to be distributed among React developers, as opposed to the JavaScript community at large. And we can actually see this in the data itself. We have about 20,000 total respondents, with 13,000 being happy React developers. Now, if we look at the statistics for Angular, we'll see that the exact inverse is true for developers who dislike or have no interest in learning Angular. Now, React was definitely the most popular JavaScript library in 2018, I am not doubting that. But what we're seeing is a flaw in the satisfaction rate. Even though everybody says it's not a competition, it's definitely a competition if you've invested a lot of time in either one of these frameworks, you want to see your own framework succeed. And the big red flag for me was in the framework conclusion section, where the author talks about the fall of Angular, which is simply not true outside of the echo chamber of the survey. And we'll look at some supporting hard data in just a second here. Another problem with the sample is that the majority of the respondents come from the United States, with a very small percentage of females, and for some reason the average salary is way higher in the United States than it is in reality. I think most people are probably just lying about their salary, or maybe the survey got distributed to a high percentage of Facebook employees working in the Bay Area. And on a similar note, the survey only had 20,000 total responses. My little YouTube channel has 70,000 subscribers, so that just puts in perspective how small this actual sample is of the total developer population. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. I think this survey is fun, but it's not something you should use as the basis for important decision making. So now let's look at some hard, unbiased data that we can use to get a picture of the true state of JavaScript. None of these metrics are perfect on their own, but we can use all of them together to get a general idea of how things sit. The first thing we'll look at is NPM downloads, and we can do that on npmtrends.com. Angular, Vue, and React all grew in 2018, but you can see at the beginning of the year, React was getting about three times more downloads than Angular, and in the last six months, that's been reduced to about one and a half to two times more downloads. And Vue's held steady at a distant third place, but Vue gets a ton of downloads in China from other sources, so keep that in mind. The next thing I want to look at is jobs. First, we'll check out Stack Overflow, and if we search React jobs, you can see we get 714 results. But if we then go search for Angular, you can see we get 380 results. So the ratio aligns almost perfectly to NPM downloads. The next thing we'll look at is freelance job postings on Upwork. Here we'll find about 118 jobs for React and about 66 for Angular. And again, we have roughly the same ratio. The next thing we'll take a look at is an article on Medium that claims that 78% of the front-end developer jobs are for React. And this is based on job postings on Indeed. If we go to Indeed and type in React, you can see that that's absolutely true. We get way more postings for React. But if we actually look at this data, they're not React jobs, they're construction jobs. With an average salary of $15 an hour. So when you read an article online, don't take it at face value. Make sure to scrutinize its data, because a lot of people just make honest mistakes, and a lot of people just bullshit. So if we look at the actual job postings on Indeed, we can type in React Developer or React Web and do the same for Angular and we get an even distribution of jobs. And most good companies will hire based on your JavaScript and programming fundamentals, not just the fact that you know a specific framework. And the last thing I wanna look at is web traffic to the documentation for these various frameworks. We can grab this unbiased data from Alexa, and it should show the same trend that we see in the survey with Angular on the decline and React on an uptrend. But we actually see the inverse of this trend with Angular's documentation site receiving more web traffic than React in 2018. And Vue.js actually generates the most web traffic, most of which comes from China. But it's interesting that this trend is the exact inverse of what we see in NPM downloads. There's probably additional data we could look at, but I'm just going to leave it there and hopefully that gives you a better picture of the real state of JavaScript. Now I want to take a few minutes to show you why Angular has been so successful over the last couple years. Because Angular has some pretty awesome superpowers that you won't find in React or Vue. So in no particular order, we'll start with routing. 
In React, everything is a component or a function, so that leads to some pretty cumbersome routing. You kind of get used to doing things this way, but when you go to Angular or Vue, it's very refreshing. We're just looking at the Vue router quick start, and what you'll see here is a router that's directly embedded with the component HTML. I really like to maintain a separation of concerns in my code, and I feel like this just violates it. And complex nested routing gets even more difficult to deal with. If you look at the Angular router, you define all your routes as a plain JavaScript object, so it's very clear and easy to understand. We have a path, and then that path routes to a specific component. We don't have to do all this weird component stuff just to define some routes. And if we look at the view router here quickly, it kind of takes the same approach as Angular, which I think just makes a lot more sense. Now, the next reason I'm thankful for Angular is the CLI. The Angular CLI is just in a completely different universe when it comes to generating boilerplate code, testing, and being extendable. In addition, we now have the Angular console, which makes the CLI much more approachable to newcomers and allows you to use everything in a graphical user interface. The officially supported CLI tool in React is Create React App, and it doesn't really do a whole lot. It will scaffold out your initial project, but it doesn't generate components, and you'll probably end up ejecting from it after generating the initial boilerplate. The Vue CLI is not quite as powerful as Angular, but it does have a really nice UI, and it gives you the option to mix and match different packages and generate your project with TypeScript, so it does offer a lot of nice options, and it seems to constantly be getting better. The next huge reason I'm thankful for Angular is dependency injection. It seems kind of weird to a web developer at first, but it's a really simple concept. You have an app with multiple components, and you want to share some state or some functionality between all those components. This is a requirement for virtually every JavaScript app, and it becomes very hard to do as your component tree grows more complex. In React, you basically have to either use the context API, which is just kind of like root scope from Angular 1, or you have to use a library like Redux, which is going to dramatically increase your code footprint on an already complex project. But with Angular, you can just create a service and then inject it into any component that you want. This allows you to separate your concerns very easily, no matter what your component tree looks like. Now, the last thing I'm thankful for is how Angular reduces complexity. A lot of people complain that Angular is too big and bloated, but that's only because other frameworks tend to hide their complexity and it doesn't really come out until you get into a complicated app. So let's take a look at a simple React component, and then we'll switch over to Angular. So with React, we have a state object, which may become hooks in the future, which aren't really much different. Then we'll define a render method, which returns some JSX. And this is actually another reason I'm thankful for Angular. Learning and using JSX is pretty annoying because it's kind of like HTML, but it has all these small caveats that make you use it in a different way than you would use regular HTML. For example, if we want to add a CSS class here, we can't just say class equals whatever. We actually have to use class name because class is a reserved word in JavaScript. This isn't a huge deal, of course, but it does feel like a weird abstraction to have when building a web application. And with JSX, you'll tend to run into code readability issues. For example, if we want to loop over a list of items, we'll need to extract this out into its own function, or we can just map it to a DOM element directly in the JSX. So you either have to destructure your HTML into multiple functions, or you have to embed this JavaScript directly in the template, which is hard to read in my opinion. So let's go ahead and switch over to Angular, and we'll build this exact same component. The nice thing about Angular is that it uses TypeScript, which both Angular and Vue are starting to adopt as well. So I'm thankful for that as well. And if we want to define our data, we can just define them as properties on this class. Then Angular allows us to write our templates like their regular HTML with some additional magic on top. So instead of writing a JavaScript loop, we can just use the ng4 directive to loop over the items in our array. So we can write out our template with a lot less code and in a way that's more readable in my opinion, assuming that you know what ng4 does. So the idea that Angular is more complex than React or Vue is really just kind of nonsense. If you've watched my channel for a while, you've seen me build out all kinds of different demos with Angular, which would just generally not be possible with React because there's additional configuration to get through. Again, I'm not saying one's better than the other, but really just wanted to highlight some of the best parts of Angular in this video. Let me know whether you agree or disagree in the comments. And again, make sure to be critical of data that's floating out around there on the interwebs, whether it supports or goes against your worldview. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. I'm wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next week.